prospects of developing smart cities in Nigeria came to the fore at the quarterly Innovators Breakfast Forum series in Lagos. It was an opportunity for stakeholders ranging from the technology, financial, policy, and business space to discuss how the smart city concept will transform Nigeria's socioeconomic landscape. First, it was important to understand the drive behind hosting the discourse on smart cities in the country. What we are doing in the Lagos Smart City is to have a work, live, and play environment. We have the incubators that are going to take a pride of place, more because of what happened to us when we were growing up in Solary in those days. Chance used to host quite a lot, of, a lot of IT companies, and we developed a lot of IT companies in the environment. But today, the incubators are becoming a big reality, a major reality for us towards developing a lot of technologies. So one of our focus after the work live and play thing is to bring in a lot of uh, incubators to reside within that city towards growing the technologies we have. Education will be very, very key for us. So you have a whole tower dedicated to incubators and that tower dedicated towards um, education. Knowledge will be very critical in this city. And as you very well know, in most smart cities, knowledge is the key thing. So we have a university that is already signed up on this city. And then we have a couple of the academies, the Cisco academies, or this world in one of the towers. There is a need for us to view these uh, opportunities, you know, further beyond just enhancing the, um, the, the, the look and feel of our cities. They are agents for economic transformation. In a, in, a, in a time like this where the, you know, you know, oil revenue is going down, you know, we think that we can kickstart uh, economy one step at a time using uh, you know, approaches like this that focuses on small uh, uh, projects in, in, in small neighborhoods or cities, but would ultimately lead to you know, a, you know, a grand you know, impact in the national economy. What are the key takeaways from the Innovators Business Forum focusing on smart cities? We believe that uh, at this point in time, in the history of our country, we need to find a creative way to begin to build our city. And how do we build our city? Is we need to bring a lot of innovation and technology in place. We need to make our city more smarter so that our people can be happier living within the city. We may need to build our city from the scratch. We need to dimension it better. We need to build more roads. But while building more roads, we need to now make those roads smarter. If you are building a road now in Lagos, you need to put the ducts. That we, you know, we encourage people to do broadband facility. If you are building a new classroom that like we are doing in most of the states, from day one, make those classrooms smarter. When you are building a new community, make those communities smarter. Even the old communities, set up parameters and variables to make a, a community smarter. When you are building a new police station or you are innovating one, make that police station smarter. Make the police station look like a bank so that you can see through. So that when you go to a police station, you know that you are going to a friendly environment. So that, the whole idea is that uh, we need to make our city smart. We need to be able to be proud of our city. And at the end of the day, for us at Imaginations, we're looking at, by 2040, a city like Lagos can host Olympics. Other smart cities are thriving because of enabling laws. Does Nigeria have the required legal framework backed by the Constitution? The smart city concept is not just about the city as a location. It's also about city as a community of connected people. So it goes beyond city boundaries. Uh, you know, so in terms of you know, uh, articulating the legal uh, responsibility. Uh, that was why I had to bring that out, you know. Uh, and you also heard when we were talking about the, the dichotomy between the need to build new cities or to improve existing cities. My position is that we should do both. You know, we cannot live through Lere or Jagunle the way it is and go and create new cities just because we want to be smart. The concept of a smart city means urbanizing, and remodeling and transforming old and existing cities into cities that the smart concept of, of ease of movement, traffic control, education, you know, uh, and so on and so forth can also happen. There is also the need for fusion of technology and infrastructure to ensure that the smart city is viable in Nigeria. For me, building smart cities, you need infrastructure to power them. 
and that infrastructure is what the investment is all about. So it means that you've got connectivity to be able to connect all those things to speak to wherever they need to speak. So for example, MTN, um, we've just gotten the 2.6 gigahertz license, which will enable you have LTE on, um, on the mobile telephony. That will actually make smart city a reality in Nigeria now because it means you can connect things to solve issues of traffic, to solve issues of security, to solve issues of anything you want to do to make a city smart and to, for the city to work well. From the policy angle, there is also support given to the development of the Smart Cities Initiative. Part of the reasons why we think that um, we are going to succeed and we are succeeding is because of the problems that we have. All right. And you can name them. Some have to do with insecurity, you know, um, un uh, unemployment, um, and uh, power, and so, and so on. But the urgency of why we should be looking at uh, um, smart uh, technologies is because, in all, we want to improve the uh, quality of living of our, of, of our cities, so we want to improve the standard of lives of our citizens. And that's why um, there's also uh, a, a strong policy backing, you know, at all levels of government, particularly at the federal government level, in, uh, you know, at the highest level, you know, you know the, 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 the urgency of uh, using smart uh, t technologies to, to support economic growth is, uh, is obvious and the, f the federal government is 100% uh, behind it. Um, they need to involve the community in the discussions around what the city should actually do and what it should look like, how it should serve people. Um, the realization that, that, that this is not something that's going to be done by the government, uh, but government does need to provide an enabling environment for, for this to happen and doesn't even look, need to look for the money. The private sector and uh, individuals are prepared to fund this, um, fund this development and will fund it if government uh, does the right things. And, uh, and um, some of those things would be better policies to allow um, a, a rapid um, adoption of broadband, the broadband technologies across these um, uh, cities, villages and towns. Um, another one would be enforcement or inclusion, updating of policies, simple things like changing the building code to ensure that buildings are actually built smart, um, that uh, government has access and private developers have access, for instance, to roofs, rooftops that could be used for smart energy, uh, as in uh, solar panels. There are very simple tweaks and uh, one of the very important things that happened today was that um, there was consensus that Calabar and Cross River State has already established the equivalent of a smart city. And it is a state, it is a city in a state in Nigeria. So what is holding the other 36, 36 states and preventing them from achieving what Cross River has been able to achieve in Calabar? The easiest way to achieve a smart city in a fast time period is to have a visionary leader of that state. Nigeria states, uh, cities are controlled by, by the state and therefore controlled by the governor. If you have a governor that is a visionary, then he can set the enabling environment to allow the private sector to do what it does best, which is to take advantage of um, its own knowledge base and its own money to find a market. So what do I mean by that? If a governor would work out um, how to put down uh, the rights of way across Lagos, let's say. Build the ducks, so you have a dig once policy, so the ducks are put in place. And then control and, and have people pay for the right to put in their fiber, their cables. This would bring an immense amount of bandwidth to all locations, um, which Wi-Fi and other wireless technologies can then ride off to provide bandwidth from uh, one point to another. With that kind of infrastructure and capacity, then intelligent people with all kinds of um, solutions can ride on that infrastructure and provide that to the citizens. And of course, the government itself can use that um, infrastructure to provide citizen services. Project. The most important element of smart city are the people. When the people are excluded, they are not building any city. A city cannot you know, emerge without the people. Without people, there are no cities. So fundamentally, the people must be involved. The resident of the city must be involved in the smarter strategy. You must involve them. 
Because at the end of the day, who will live in the city? See the people. One thing is clear from the discourse on smart cities in Nigeria. It must be geared towards inclusivity. That means engaging communities. Or else, it will become another elitist agenda.